Indeed, all praise and thanks are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him and we seek his help and we seek his assistance. And we seek the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the uh, evil that within us, the evil within us and from the bad consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads us straight, no one can guide him after that. I think the cord is missing. It's only it's only to the cord. She wants you to open this window. I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam is a slave and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means, O you who believe, O you people of faith, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he has a right to be feared and do not die unless you are Muslim. O mankind, revere your Lord who created you from a single soul and from that soul is mate, and from both of them many men and women. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one from whom you demand your mutual rights and don't sever the ties of the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watchful over you. O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say a word that is directed towards the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your affairs for you and set them in order. And whoever has obeyed Allah and his messenger has already achieved a great success. As to what follows, then without a doubt, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. And the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, the sunnah. And the worst of all matters are the newly invented matters into the religion. For every newly invented matter in the religion is an accursed and wretched innovation. Every accursed and wretched innovation is in the fire. Indeed, in Islam, everything and everyone has rights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged us to give everyone who has rights his or her rights. And from those rights is the rights of the parents over the children. And because of this fact, we know that the children, they have to obey the parents, respect them, never disobey them and never disrespect them. But with all rights comes responsibilities. So the parents, they have a responsibility towards the children. The parents are the ones who have to take care of the children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, wa quuluhan nasu wal hijara. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means O you who believe save yourselves and your children from a fire meaning the hell fire whose fuel is man and stone so it is upon the chil our parents to protect their children first to save themselves huh? and then their children their families from a fire whose fuel is man and stone now the question arises, how do we save our families from the fire? And the answer is very simple. We have to show them the right path. The path that is described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam in the Quran and Sunnah. We need to teach them the difference between right and wrong. And we have to educate them on how to move about. From the most important aspect of this is that we need to teach them about their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Huh? What is his characteristics? Who is Allah? What is Allah? And that which opposes that. We have to teach them tawheed. We need to teach them the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what opposes that, which is shirk. We have to educate our children. Who is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why was he sent? What's his status in this life for him, for his family, for his companions, and for us? Children, they can and should be a form of joy in life, a source of pride, and they may also even be a cause for pain, worry, and distress. Therefore, we need to be focused and keen as it relates to the upbringing of the children. We should be paying close attention to the way that we raise our children. Children are dependent on their parents, and Islam has put emphasis on the role of the parent in cultivating the children and establishing their personalities. Islam has paid particular attention to upbringing children in a proper manner. So the parents have to teach the children Give them good morals and lead by example. Children have the right to be fed and clothed, educated and protected until they reach adulthood and sometimes beyond. These rights are, for, are, are, are both for boys and girls and there's no distinction or no difference between them. We can say that children are a trust. They are in a manner, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and we have to carry out that amana. It is an amana that has been given to the parents. And the parents will be held accountable. <clears throat> they will be held accountable for this on the day of judgment. The parents are responsible for the moral, ethical, and essential religious teachings of the children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَفْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمْلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ كُلُّمْ بِئِمْ بِمَا كَسِبَ رَحِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means And those who have believed and whose descendants followed them in faith We will join them with their descendants and we will not deprive them of anything of their deeds. Every person, for what he has earned, is retained. SubhanAllah. And the responsibility is on the father, but it is also on the mother. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in a hadith, an Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhumma, an al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَلَا كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْعُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِي فَلَأَمِيرُ الَّذِي عَلَى النَّاسِ رَاعٍ فَهُوَ مَسْعُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِي وَالرَّجُلُ رَاعٍ عَلَى أَهْلِ بَيْتِي وَهُوَ مَسْعُولٌ عَنْهُمْ وَالْمَرْعَةُ رَاعِيَةٌ عَلَى بَيْتِي بَعْلِهَا وَوَلَدِهِ وَهِيَ مَسْعُولَةٌ عَنْهُمْ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, That all of you are responsible. 
Kullukum ra'a. All of you are responsible. Or we can say that all of you are like a shepherd. All of you are like a shepherd. And you are responsible for your flock. So the man is responsible for his family, the members of his household. Huh? And the women are responsible for taking care of his children, taking care of that which is in her home. So the, so the man, he has to go out and provide for his family and take care of his family, give them food, clothing, and shelter, his wives and his children. And she has to maintain that in his absence. And this is very important. While the man is out, he should be trying to earn a halal means. He should be trying to earn halal wealth so that he can feed his family, so his family can be proud of him and he can be proud of himself. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him and that which he earned. And the woman should be mindful of her obligation first and foremost to her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and her obligation to her husband and the fact that she's been made responsible over her children. So when the husband instills rules that coincide with the Quran and the Sunnah, the woman shouldn't take it upon herself to oppose him in that. When he leaves the house, it's a free for all. When the dog is away, all the cats and kittens get to play. I don't give it enough. The man shouldn't be a tyrant. He should set good examples when he's out and when he's home. He shouldn't be let me be careful what I say. He shouldn't be soft and a coward when he's in the streets and he comes home and abuses his family. Nor should the woman pretend to be something. I call it the peekaboo. When she wears the veil, but every now and then she, you know, play peekaboo with. No. She should be the way that she is outside of the presence of her husband, the way that she is in his presence. So if she knows that she's going to do something that her husband wouldn't be pleased with, that she wouldn't do in his presence, she shouldn't do it in his absence. And this is something that affects the children. When they see this disunity between the parents, this separation between the parents, they look towards the path of least resistance. Right? Because children want to have fun. They're being tricked into believing that they're being held captive. And they're not free. But let's be realistic. No one is really free. Uh, free. We're all slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's not become slaves of our desires. And let's set the best example for one another. When the men go out to provide for his family, the woman should maintain his house and his children. And she should maintain her modesty. And she should be mindful of what she does and says around her children. When she's on the phone, the things that she watches. Uh, if she wants to watch these reality shows, she shouldn't do it in front of her children. She shouldn't do it at all, but she definitely shouldn't do it in front of her children. The parents' right to be respected by their children may even weigh heavily on the children's right, uh, the children's rights being fulfilled. And that is love and care. Love and care and guidance from them, meaning their parents. And what I mean by this is that sometimes the children have a tendency to, whether they see it directly or someone is telling them this, something went on between the parents. So now the children either think that they have a bad mother or a bad father predicated on what the other spouse or ex-spouse is saying. Friends, family, in-laws, mother-in-law. She get the children to herself and then she plant bad seeds inside of the other parents, I mean, inside of the children's head and mind against that other parent, or maybe even her own child, right? She wants to be in control, so she tells children things, and they start to look for things that really don't exist. So when the parent is be, uh, being firm, the man, for example, is being hard on his children, right? He's making sure that they pray, that they get up from Fajr and that they fast in Ramadan, and that the girls wear hijab, you have someone telling them, you don't have to do that. He should let you decide for him for yourself like he did. Why is there a choice for this parent? You as a parent, you wouldn't let us do what we wanted to do. You had rules in your house. You either abide by my rules or you get the heck out. It's the same here. 
Islam is our way, it's our way of life. If we practice Islam and we teach our children Islam practically, then they're gonna do what they've been taught. It's second nature. But when we expose them to people outside of our houses and our families and our religion, our religious beliefs and our moral and ethical beliefs and practices, then we affect them. Because children are like open wounds sometimes, like the new shahada. If you don't cover up that wound, it's gonna become infected. So you have to protect your children. You have to keep them in good company. And you have to make sure you set good examples. You have to love them and care for them. And you have to show them this all the time. Some of us who, who have children who are older, some of this we may have taken for granted and we see our children moving differently now. Some of the older ones as opposed to the younger ones. We took for granted that everything was gonna be all right. We married a woman and we married a man who we thought was gonna be upright. But in reality, they weren't. Well, they were for some time. And the children became affected by some of the things that we took for granted. So we wasn't really paying attention to a lot of the stuff that's taking place. Now, and particularly social media. It's one of the biggest fitting that we have been faced with, if not the biggest. I remember, you know, traveling for studying and stuff like that. And I looked at the people change over time. The people started to change in the Muslim world when satellite TV came, just satellite dishes in general. It started exposing them to things that they had never been exposed to before. Lewdness, filth, lying, cheating, drugs, alcohol, right? So then the social media thing came, the internet first, but then social media. And everything we tried to protect our children from and keep them away from, we brought it right into the house and put it literally and figuratively at their fingertips. So they were able to you know, see things and hear things that they never saw and heard before. And then everyone started doing it. Then you start looking like the bad guy because you told them no. And when you left, after telling them no, someone told them, yeah, just don't let your father find you. Just don't let your mother find you. I don't that. So you taught them deception. You taught them that they can basically do whatever they want to do as long as they don't get caught. You don't know what seed you planted in them and what's going to grow from that seed. May Allah protect us. So a child can be poisoned into believing that this, that this parent is hard or doesn't love them or is abusive or whatever the case may be. It's not giving them freedom and not allowing them to be free. No, we're not allowing you to be free to go to hell. I believe what we used to say, you learn from your mistakes. But I think it's better to learn from the mistakes of others so you don't have to make those same mistakes. Because everybody can't recover from those mistakes. Keep bumping your head, bumping your head, touching something hot. You don't have to do that. You know that it's hot. Why do you have to see it yourself? You saw what happened to him, her. You don't keep busting your head till you see some white meat. Then you want to stop. Now you don't have a choice. So we have to be practical and lead by example and be mindful of what we instill in our children in our children and what we allow them to be exposed to hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa al-aqibatu lil muttaqeen فلا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد. Now, so some of the basic rights of children in Islam are as follows: the children have the right to be fed, clothed, sheltered, protected, educated, and this is until they reach adulthood, sometimes beyond. And protection means against moral and physical harm, and most importantly, spiritual harm. So we have to protect our children from all of the poisons, the things that corrupt children, that corrupt society on the whole. But let's be realistic. Some people, adults, we like entertainment. We like different forms of entertainment. And it could be just entertainment, right? It's not gonna really affect how you move. You're not gonna watch some gangster movie with these young boys and rappers and start wanting to be a young gangster and rapper. You know, for the most part. 
you know, it's just entertaining. But for children who are still trying to find their way, they're like sponges, and then they look at everything around them. Even the youngsters who are not gangsters want to imitate the gangsters. Because the rappers, the people who are put out in front of us as examples, this is the way that they dress. This is the way that they speak. This is the way they wear their hair. This is the type of clothing that they wear, the type of jewelry, glasses, cars, whatever. Pants sagging and all of this stuff. You got skinny pants on that sag. So you like you got some two T's on. It's power on. So we have to be mindful of that. Sitting down with your children watching inappropriate stuff. No, you want to watch that stuff, watch that stuff at, later on at night or when their children are at school. If you just have to do that, then do it in a way that even though you know you watch it, you don't want to expose your children to it. You no know, people used to say, oh man, you tell me something, ain't a dope thing. That's how I'm going to tell you. <laughs> because I know what happened to me. I know what happened before I started abusing drugs. I know what happened when I was young and strong and healthy and I didn't know nothing about that stuff. I went to school and I grew up with some of the people who probably could have been uh, the first, if not right there with Michael Jordan and all of those people. Of course, they're a little older than me, but the point is I saw these people on the blacktop, you know, going to the high school games, junior high games, these guys doing some amazing things. They was kicking it, women getting high. And you know, I always start with that marijuana, which is the gateway drug. People probably haven't heard that term, but they don't really understand it. Meaning it's the gateway to everything else. Once you start getting high, it's like that first high, that initial high, you're constantly chasing that high. You want to be just as high as you was that high. And then once you start getting high, regularly, you start to become accustomed to getting high. So what used to get you high don't really get you high. So you got to start taking more. Then it become a habit. You can't get but so high. You're just doing it out of habit. To the point where now you're thinking, man, let me try something else. Let me see if I can get even higher. Then you look up and your whole life has passed by. Drugs and alcohol is taking your life away. Right? So naturally, if this is something that's happened to you, whatever it may be, drugs, alcohol, gangs, violence, you know, uh, illicit behavior, lust, right? Crime, any type of crime. The biggest crime is a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the, on the tongue of Luqman, he said, Ya Bunay, La tushrik billah, inna shirk, inna shirk al He said, Oh my son, do not associate partners with Allah. Do not make shirk. For verily, shirk is the greatest form of oppression. The greatest sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made vulu, oppression of a haram upon himself. So associating partners is the greatest sin. Right? And these things can happen, especially when you're not in your right frame of mind. Drugs and alcohol, all of these bad things, these crimes. Once people start to get exposed to it, it's a little nervous at first. And after the first few times, you start to feel, okay, this is a piece of cake. Then it becomes an addiction. Crime, robbing, rape, all of these things. But that seed got planted somewhere, right? People want to mess with the children and, and, and have these, what's this, uh, gender issues. Where the child is being made to believe that they don't have a gender and it's wrong to say that you have a gender. Where they're teaching homosexuality in kindergarten and preschool and stuff like that. Even heterosexual behavior shouldn't be taught to children. What type of children learns about sex as a preschooler? And then you wonder why people are crazy and demented and they do harmful things and sick things for desire, for pleasure. They've been taught it at a young age. Also, uh, from the rights of the children, is that the parents should give them a good name. The parents should give them a good name. And even in the time of the Arabs, you know, and beyond, the people used to have names that were just, you know, 
bad names. You know, we do nicknames and stuff like that, but we tr we should try not to do names that are demeaning or demoralizing or that you know make you look a certain way or even make you start to feel a certain way. And as far as names, the best names is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. And we should be proud of these names and understand what they mean and try to emulate those names. And all of us have names, even if we have the quote unquote government name, we all got some type of Muslim name that we like to be known by. Right? And we should try to live up to that. Right? We, we, we were, some of us were older than we became, when we became Muslim, so we chose names, and we had names chosen for us, predicated on what people saw or knew from us. So if you give a child a good name at birth, then you start to teach him how to emulate that, how to actualize that name. <clears throat> it is the responsibility of parents to develop the child's personality in all aspects of life. So you want to put that child in a good environment, try to give that child a good education, and show that child the importance of having good character, being mannerable. Like I say about respect. Respect is something that you ultimately have to internalize. Right? Respect emanates from within. You can have respect for someone or you may not respect someone because of who they are and how they move, but it doesn't give you the right to disrespect them. I may not respect you as a man, but I, that don't, it doesn't mean I have a right to disrespect you. I don't respect Christianity, Judaism, the Hebrew stuff. I don't respect none of that garbage. It's garbage. You sound like the man's name. Like, garbage. Yeah. I don't respect none of that stuff. But that doesn't mean I have a right to disrespect you. Right? The Prophet used to say, don't curse the gods of the Mushrikun or Mushrikeen. Don't curse their God because they'll turn around and curse your God. Right? So we have to be respectful, respectable. We need to teach our children that. Right? But if you don't agree with someone, it doesn't give you the right to strap a bomb on yourself and go blow up a bus. This is not jihad. This is suicide. And it's not from our religion. It's terrorism. Whoever may be doing it, but it has no place in Islam. So no one should be, you shouldn't be apologetic either when it comes to having to explain this issue. If you want to put this now, I did a talk one time at the courthouse downtown for all the judges and prosecutors and stuff like that, trying to help them deal with Muslims and how should they deal with Muslims, like if they have to serve a warrant or something like that. You know, and alhamdulillah, I was good. One of the brothers, the Muslim brothers, set it up. And uh, so they really, some people was asking questions, trying to get me to stop talking about Islam. Then they start talking about these actions and stuff like that, these acts. And I just told them, I said, listen, if you want to put Islam on trial. You want to put Islam on the stand and let Islam defend itself. Islam, what does the Quran and Sunnah say? Forget about what the people do. The truth is not known by the men and what the men do, but rather the men are known by the truth. Whether or not they uphold it. So the truth makes the man known, not the opposite even when we look at some of the Christian people. We don't attribute the actions of the Ku Klux Klan, for example, to Christianity. And some of the other heinous crimes that took place by so-called Christians. We don't, we don't say that, it's, that Christianity taught them that. We don't say that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam taught them that. So we don't need to feel apologetic when we talk about these things. If someone is doing that, they, they, maybe they're not Muslim, or maybe they, they may be Muslim. But they have something with them that they didn't get from the Quran and from the Sunnah. In Islam, educated is not, uh, education is not limited to that which we learn from books. You know, We have to be careful uh, about taking the books as our scholars. We have to go to the learned people and have this stuff explained to us because we can read certain things, hadith, even verses from the Quran that have a total misunderstanding of what was intended. Right? Read Quran, we need to understand tafsir. You know? Why was this verse being revealed? Does this verse still carry weight or has it been abrogated? Because there's some verses in the Quran that abrogate other verses. Right? The Quran came down over a span of 23 years. 
and things changed gradually, but it all stayed connected. It's from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the children need to be loved, shown affection, kiss them, hug them, lay with them, right? It was a man who saw another man from the Sahaba kissing his children. You know, he asked him about them. He said, can you kiss your, you kiss your son? He said, of course. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, who doesn't show mercy won't be shown mercy. Matter of fact, this was the Prophet He who doesn't show mercy won't be shown mercy. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kissing his grandson. He who doesn't show mercy, he who is not merciful will not be shown mercy. The best of you is the one who gives a good education, intellectual and moral to his children. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of you is the one who learns the Quran and then teaches it. And who, first and foremost, you teach it to your family. Parents should teach their children good manners, good etiquettes, good education, put them in good environments. Uh, first and foremost, at the home, we say everything starts at home. You can live in a bad neighborhood, but you don't have to be a product of that neighborhood. There are many people who came from the projects, the inner city, and became successful, not just from selling drugs, Robbing, stealing, rapping, selling their bodies. In reality, we, we kind of, we sort of like on the same playing field. We don't even ground as it relates to education. I have my children in school with white boys. I'm talking about, you know, college level stuff. You know? um, I tell them, man, y'all on an even playing field. Don't be deceived into thinking that they have something that you don't, or they have more opportunity. No. All you got to do is learn and apply yourself, right? We got to quit using these crutches that they give us to lay on because it's really just a pacifier. We have to encourage ourselves to do more and do better, to be better people, to strive to be better, to perfect our character, be better people the way that we deal with one another. One of the best ways of giving down is through your actions and your dealings, right? And teach our children to be responsible. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْئُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِي all of you are shepherds. All of you have a flock, and all of you are responsible for your flock, and you're going to be questioned about that flock. I don't know if I mentioned that in the translation before. You're going to be questioned about that flock. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسوا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقت لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك أنت أفر رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا ثبت قلوبنا على دينك والله سبحانه وتعالى plant us uh, firmly يا مقلب القلوب O turner of the hearts establish our hearts firmly upon your religion الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر